everyone. This week we will be talking about neighbor discovery in IPv6. Now, ICMPv6 has a similar operation to ICMPv4, and we talked about that last week. Now, this week we talk about neighbor discovery. So it's a process within ICMPv6 used to initiate and maintain node-to-node -node communications on a network. Neighbor discovery has five functional processes that nodes execute in order to communicate with neighbor nodes on the network, whether on-link or off-link. On-link means that nodes are actively attached and interacting with the current network. Off-link means they are not. Those processes are router solicitation, router advertisement, neighbor solicitation, neighbor advertisement, and redirect. So we'll talk about the packet layouts and the field formats of neighbor discovery messages and options, as well as operational details of neighbor discovery. And we're gonna show a few examples of packet captures. So our objectives here, we're gonna describe neighbor discovery in IPv6 and how it compares to ARP in IPv4. We're going to explain neighbor discovery message interaction between the hosts and routers. We're going to describe the process flow for how a node determines that its IPv6 address is unique and how it communicates on the IPv6 network. We're going to explain each of the main neighbor discovery messages and what information each of them provides to a node. We're gonna identify the components that host stores in local memory to facilitate IPv6 communications. We're gonna discuss how a host receives updates concerning better first hops to access nodes that aren't on link. We're gonna identify when capturing and reviewing ICMPv6 data using a protocol analyzer, the neighbor discovery messages and option fields in those packets using specific decode filters. And hopefully we'll gain an overall understanding of the neighbor discovery process. And again, the five functional processes that are executed with neighbor nodes in a network. So the IPv6 neighbor discovery protocol, uh, it's specified in RFC 4861, and there's updates in RFCs 5942, 6980, 7048, 7527, and 7559. And they define a variety of discovery mechanisms. These mechanisms permit nodes to find out what link they're located on, learn address prefixes, learn where a link's working routers reside, discover link neighbors, and discover where neighbors are active. So if you recall in the introduction, we talked about five ICMPv6 message types. So here we have router solicitation, router advertisement, neighbor solicitation, neighbor advertisement, and redirect. So how does this compare to specific IPv4 protocols. Well, neighbor solicitation is akin to ARP request in IPv4. IPv6 neighbor advertisement is an ARP reply. Router solicitation and router advertisement and redirect in IPv6 all have a comparable protocol and um, um, uh, method in IPv4. Uh, duplicate address detection is Gratuitous ARP in IPv4, and neighbor cache is your ARP cache in IPv4. So there's five primary message types for network discovery. Again, router solicitation, router advertisement, neighbor solicitation, neighbor advertisement, and redirect. And in addition, uh, new options have been added to the original neighbor discovery operations and are included uh, in various RFCs. So you have packet format diagrams and packet decode examples, um, which are important for you to understand. Um, these message formats give a foundation for IPv6 operational processes for node-to-node -node communication. So let's talk about router solicitation. 
when a host interface initializes, it may not wait for the next router advertisement message to be received. Instead, it might send a router solicitation message to determine if any IPv6 routers are on a network segment, and if so, they want to learn the network prefix and other parameters relating to address auto configuration. Here in uh, the table, we're describing um, the ICMP field and description um, for the various router solicitation message format fields. And we have a packet structure. So if you want to understand the packet structure for a router solicitation message, this is it in figure 6.1. So in router advertisements, routers are going to send periodically a router advertisement message to let hosts know of link prefixes. For instance, if address auto configuration is enabled, link MTU, valid and preferred lifetimes, and other options. Routers also reply to router solicitation messages received by a node using router advertisement message. So here in figure 6.3, we see a router advertisement packet structure. And in table 6.3, here are your various format fields for router advertisement. And we have another table here with a continued um, list of format fields for reserve, router lifetime, etc. So for neighbor solicitation, a node can send out a neighbor solicitation message. Oh, I'm sorry, I got on the wrong slide here. Um, to find or verify the link layer address of a local node to see if a node is still available or to check that its own address isn't already in use by another node. And this is called duplicate address detection or DAD. So here in the, in the table, um, we see the various format fields for the <clears throat> neighbor solicitation message. And here is the packet structure. So if neighbor advertisement, a node sends a solicited neighbor advertisement message when requested. Um, usually it's responding to a neighbor solicitation message. If its own link layer address changes or its role changes, the node will send an unsolicited neighbor advertisement message to quickly propagate new address information. So here we see the neighbor advertisement packet structure. And here are message format fields for neighbor advertisement. So routers will send redirect messages to inform a host of a better first hop router for a destination. Routers also send redirect messages to inform a host that a destination node is on link. And when that occurs, it's usually because prefixes are different between the sending host and the destination node. So here's an example of a redirect packet structure. And here are the redirect message format fields. So here are the neighbor discovery message option types. Neighbor discovery message may, but they're not required to have one or more options. And a specific option might be repeated multiple times in a single message. Uh, as well, the, the type field is an 8-bit identifier for the type of option. Um, 
And then also here, if you're interested, the, the RFCs are listed in the table as well that uh, lay out the individual option types. So source and target link layer address options, they're used in neighbor solicitation, router solicitation, and redirect messages. So here are the, um, the option format fields. And remember they contain the link layer address of the sender. And here is the packet, option packet structure for uh, source link layer. Now the target link layer address option is used in neighbor advertisement and router advertisement messages. So here are, uh, and it contains instead of the uh, source link layer address options, which we just talked about, this is gonna contain the, the link layer address for the target. Um, here are the option format fields, and here is the packet structure for the target link layer address option. So the prefix information option is used in router advertisement messages. The option contains prefix information for an on-link address and prefixes for address autoconfig. And here are the option format fields for prefix. And here are, is the packet structure for the prefix information option. So the redirected header option is sent in a redirect message and it contains all or part of the original IPv6 packet being redirected. There's a, uh, a list of the re redirected header option format fields. And here's the packet structure. And yes, as we go through this, this week is a lot of rote memorization. So this is a different sort of content. Um, it's almost, was it uh, the third week? Um, various packet structures, it, it's similar to that. Uh, you'll, you'll get parts of, of this content where really we just need to understand what does the header look like? What are the option types? How does it break down? What are the field sizes, etc.? Because as you're using network discovery and, and, um, and looking at packets, you need to make sure that you can you can pick this stuff up and pick this stuff out of some of the communications you're seeing and be able to understand it. So I'll jump back on here. Um, the MTU option. So this is sent in a router advertisement message to provide a common MTU value for nodes in the same network segment. So here's their option format fields. And here is the packet structure for the MTU option. And just so you know, there's three more, and then we'll get on to some different content. Um, the advertisement interval option, and it, it's if it's included, is used for mobile IPv6 by mobile nodes receiving router advertisement messages for their movement detection algorithm. And those are described in RFC 6275. So here are the advertisement interval option format fields. And here's the packet structure. The home agent information option, uh, it's in the, uh, sorry, home agents can include this in the router advertisement messages, but it shouldn't be included if uh, the home agent bit uh, is not set, so the H bit. Um, 
here is the information option for map fields. And here is the packet structure. All right, so finally we have the route information option. It's sent in router advertisement messages to specifically include routes for hosts to add to their default router list. And it's described in RFC 4191. So here is the route information packet structure. And finally, here are the option format fields. All right, let's go back into concept. So here is the conceptual host model. Um, <clears throat> RFC 4861 defines here what must occur for the neighbor discovery process to be successful but it doesn't exactly mandate how the neighbor discovery process is to operate on all nodes. Rather, again, it defines what must occur for it to be successful. Um, the neighbor discovery definition for this operation is known as the conceptual host model, and it represents information that a host should maintain in some shape or form in order to communicate effectively in an IPv6 network and the conceptual host model is primarily concerned with operational behavior by hosts so with respect to storing neighbor data on a host for a node to communicate with a neighbor node via ipv6 it needs to know the following information the neighbor's link layer address if the neighbor is a host or a router whether the node recently communicated with the neighbor and if the node itself has a list of routers. So the following information, uh, this list here, it stores the neighbor cache, the destination cache, the prefix list, and the default router list. So I'll show you um, a picture of a model in a moment, uh, but essentially there's a nine step conceptual sending algorithm that's used. If a node needs to find out the IP address of a next hop, it does so by examining its destination cache to learn the associated link layer address. And it does that by examining its neighbor cache. If a node doesn't have these addresses available, it starts a process called the next hop determination. Uh, and it populates its caches and lists with its neighbors addressing information. And here is the full diagram of the conceptual sending algorithm. So the neighbor discovery process, uh, it involves a number of various sub-processes, address resolution, neighbor unreachability detection, duplicate address detection, or DAD, as we talked about before, router discovery, and redirect. A node is going to invoke the address resolution process when it wants to send a packet to an on-link neighbor, but the sender doesn't know that the link or doesn't know the link layer address for the target node. So a series of neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisement messages are used to resolve the link layer address for the target node. And here are some diagrams that describe the address resolution process. So here's an example with a neighbor solicitation, which is the first step. And then the second step, neighbor advertisement. So 
So neighbor unreachability detection is used for node to neighbor node verification of online communications capability. And that includes host to host, host to router, and router to host reachability. So there's uh, five states for a neighbor cache entry, and that's defined in RFC 4861, incomplete, reachable, stale, delay, and probe. And nodes will consider a neighbor reachable if there's been recent communications by an upper layer protocol like TCP. So duplicate address detection or DAD, uh, when a node joins a link, it has to first determine whether or not its unicast IPv6 address is already in use by another node. Oh, whether the node's IPv6 address is configured via stateless, stateful, or manual configuration, you still have to perform DAD. Neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisement messages are used in the process. So to, uh, to perform this, a node will send a multicast neighbor solicitation message. It's configured with the destination MAC address and the destination IP address consisting of its tentative IPv6 address with the source address in the IPv6 header as the unspecified address colon colon. Um, it doesn't include its own link layer address in the source link layer address option field. So here are examples of the duplicate address detection process. So in step one, a neighbor solicitation message is sent. And in step two, a neighbor advertisement. So router discovery, it's used by nodes to discover neighbor routers on the local link, learn prefixes, configure their default gateway, and other potential configuration parameters that relate to auto config, both stateless or stateful, that are useful to the node. And here are some examples of the process. So in step one, router solicitation. And in step two, router advertisement. So redirect messages. Routers send them to inform host, hosts that there's a better first hop router to send packets to a specific destination. In addition, redirect messages are used by routers to inform a host that a destination node is an on-link neighbor. So here's uh, an example of the process in step one, the host is sending. And then the redirect message itself. Finally, here's the router forwarding the initial packet. All right, so let's go over some of the big points that we discussed. IPv6 introduces the neighbor discovery protocol, and it helps support stateless auto configuration and provides improved support for mobile users. The conceptual host model represents information that a host should use to maintain uh, effective communications in an IPv6 network. Router solicitation and router advertisement messages help nodes learn network prefixes and other stateless or stateful address auto configuration capabilities. And finally, neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisement messages help nodes discover neighbor nodes that are either on link or off link. And that is all for this week. Talk to you soon.